Come on, let's sing that a little bit, because somebody needs to be encouraged this morning. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what it looks like. It'll make it continuously and we are thankful for those prayers and your thoughtfulness but our sister need those of you that can get a prayer through my sister Bernice needs your prayers what we want to do we want to treat this just like it were you. And we want to push away from the table. And we want to sacrifice on her behalf. And when I heard Brother Jones, I know it gets hard sometimes. 
And I know there are times when it gets so bad that you feel like giving up. Life will do you that way sometimes. But brothers and sisters, you need to be encouraged this morning. Because we serve a God not only that can heal the blind, not only can he restore limbs, but we serve a God that can even raise the dead. So I say that to say I don't care how bad your circumstance, your situation, I want you to be encouraged that you serve somebody that can make the difference in your life. He can change your circumstance. So we want to set some time aside to fast and pray for our sister. Because if it were you, you would want it done for you. And I say with all sincerity, don't wait until it's you. Because you will, we will reap that which we've sown. If we've sown into others, then we will reap the same. But we want to be on one accord. And we want to hurt and suffer for the well-being of our sister. You don't know what God will say. But if we don't ask him with humility, we won't know what he will say. So we're going to ask him as a body. We want to pray both for her and Brother Jones. God has been wonderful. Look at it. He's been good to him.
Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. When we're reading, you're hearing verse, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Thank you, God. If you have that, say amen. amen. Shall we read? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hey, hey, hey. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm. I want to talk to you this morning on this subject. Are you in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Father, would you come and take your stand behind this desk? Father, would you come and speak unto the hearts of your people? Oh, Lord, would you come and edify this body and glorify thine own name? For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and ask it all. And for his sake. Amen. If you are in Christ, everything has changed. What did I say? If you are in Christ, everything has changed. Brothers and sisters, a man went looking at real estate. He found a property 
on location. Let he light. The current owners realized that the property didn't look that good and assured the man that they would fix it up before he would take possession. Forget it, he said. I don't want the building. I want the site. And sisters and brothers, just like that, I submit to you, God isn't interested in trying to fix up the building. He's interested in the site so he can build on the site what he wants. Aha! Uh -huh. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right there. Right there. Brothers and sisters, now we've heard that for a number of years. I want you to notice I didn't say if a man be in church. I didn't say if a man sings in the choir. I didn't say, watch me, if he's on the church roll. Notice what the Lord is saying. If a man be in Christ, he is. A new creature. Some of your Bibles say a new creation. The question this morning that we hope to answer, what does it mean to be in Christ? And what are its benefits? What does it mean to be in Christ? And what are its benefits? The first thing, let us examine, sisters and brothers, what it means to be in Christ. I believe that there is much misunderstanding about what it means to be in Christ. Some people associate being in Christ with being members on the church roll. I submit to you this morning, that isn't being in Christ. You could be the best member right in a church and still not be in Christ. It's sad because I believe that there are millions that are dying, perishing, because they think that because they're a member of a church and they call it their covering. Uh, say that, sir, say that. But yet, they're not in Jesus. Amen. So the question this morning, we want to answer what does it mean to be in Christ and what are its benefits? So let's examine what it means to be in Christ. The first thing it means is if a man be in Christ, his heart is fixed. Now, that doesn't register with everybody right away. If he's in Christ, his heart is fixed. Show you what I'm talking about. The Greek word there used to describe the be in Christ is a word, is a primary preposition denoting a fixed position. Ah! In place, time, or state. Y'all watching now? So if a man be in Christ, he is in a fixed position. Are y'all watching now? 
I remember, and we're going to look at Psalm 57. When David fled from Saul in the cave, when Saul was trying to kill him, Pops, when David fled from Saul, this psalm was written. Notice verse 5. Come on, 5 through 7. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Now he's running for his life, but yet he's telling God, be thou exalted, O God, above the heaven. Let thy glory be what? Above all the earth. Now watch it. They have prepared a net for my steps. In other words, Lord, they trying to kill me. Watch it. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit for me. Into the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Lord, they so, tried to cast a, a, a pit for me. Uh, but they did it. They meant it for me. Yeah. But they themselves have fallen themselves. Uh, Watch this. In other words, though they approach me, though they pursue me to kill me, let me tell you something, that's not going to turn me around because I have hard time. That's not going to stop me from serving you. Watch me now. Watch me. See, some of us are being tried in the fire. But listen to what he said. He went into a praise, but verse 7 lets you know. Read it. My heart is fixed, O oh God. Wait a minute. My what? My heart is fixed, O oh God. See, being in Jesus denotes a fixed position. Yes, sir. Watch me now. See, when you are not in a fixed position, that means today I may see one thing in you, but tomorrow I may see something totally different. See, when you're not fixed, you have these mood swings. Watch me now. Sometimes you, 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 you involve yourself in sin, and sometimes you won't. See, when you move from time to time, huh? when your position go from, I'm going to be faithful to God Almighty too, this time he looked too good to say no to. Or uh, she looked a little too good to. Watch me now. See, when you're in a fixed position, it doesn't matter how she comes. It doesn't matter how he comes. When you're fixed, I'm watching now. See, if you're in Jesus, you're, you're in a fixed position. Oh, watch it now. Let's go over real, real quick to John 15. Watch it now. Let, let's read. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me. He that what? He that abideth in me. <laughs> Wait a minute. I want this to sink in. You need to understand where the Lord is coming from. He that, he didn't say that talks about me. He didn't say that teaches his word, God preaches his word. He didn't say those that are in church every week. He said, he that what? I don't in me. Now watch this. He that abideth in me and I in him. Huh? The same what? The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. There are two fixed positions there. He that abideth in me. You got to stay in Jesus. Now watch me now. See that word abideth means to stay. Stay in a given place. To stay. Watch me now. To stay in a given state. It means to continue. It means to dwell. It means to stay. So when God watches now, you need 
to stay, we need to learn how to stay where God expects us to stay. Sisters and brothers, it is too late for how we move back and forth. It's something how when we experience storms, we know how to run beneath his wings. But when it looks like it's sunny, when all seems well, we tip out in play. I'm going to tell you something. That's a dangerous thing because, see, that's not in Jesus. Because being in Jesus means you abide there, you stay there, you dwell there. Amen. See, when you have one, when you go through these uh, times in your life where you win him, you're not. You win him, you're not. That's not in Jesus. And when you're like that, ooh, let me not get ahead of myself. I almost told you something. But I'm going to wait just a second. I'm going to finish this. He that abideth in me and I in him. Christ is saying, you got to stay in me so I can stay in you. Did y'all get that? You got to stay in him so he can stay in you. If you dwell in him, he will dwell in you. But watch it. And so in other words, what that simply means, that when you leave him, guess what? You got to stay in him if you want him to stay in you. Watch this. Read. The same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Y'all believe that? Let me tell you something. You are in a place where you are absolutely foolish. When you don't stay connected to that vine. Because why? He's sharing with you, man. You can't do nothing without him. Then why would you try to go contrary or oppose him or not stay with him? When you are vulnerable without him, you have no chance without Jesus. Sisters and brothers, listen to me. I don't care what it is you're trying to attain or achieve in this life. Uh -huh. Bring it. About it. You won't do it without him. Yeah. The smartest thing you will ever do is to get in him and stay there. That's the smartest decision you will ever make in your life. I'm going to show you the benefits of staying in Jesus. Come on, read that next verse. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather and cast them into the fire and they are burned. What God is saying, man, sister, but listen, when you don't stay in Jesus, you make yourself a prey. You know what that's like? A, 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 a sheep being fixed in with protection where wolves can't get in and attack the sheep. But the sheep want to get out so bad when the gate open, the sheep run and not realizing you just made yourself a prey. It may seem like you have freedom out there running through the green pasture. It may seem like it's about to get better, but don't fool yourself. You just made yourself vulnerable, and that's how too many church folk treat Jesus. Oh, I'm free. Free from what to do what? I hear too many church folk go to church every week make real Christians feel bad about the level of commitments that they make to Jesus. 
And the level of commitment comes from the study of God's word. And you let somebody make you feel bad about obeying Jesus. And the devil will do it if you allow him to. See, he can't come to me with that because I'm proud to live about his book. I'm excited about living according to God. And before coming up, I said, let me show you why I do what I do. Let me show you why I believe what I believe. I'm not just doing what you see me do. I do what I've seen done of my father. I'm doing what's written in this book. Oh, y'all can't do nothing. Yeah, we can do a lot. But we have restraints in our life. We can't do just anything. And let me tell you something. Neither can you. to being in Jesus. And I'm going to share a few of them with you in a moment. But I want you to watch this verse. Go ahead and read it. And read verse 7. I'm sorry. If ye abide in me. If ye what? If ye abide in me. And my words abide in you. <laughs> ye shall ask what ye will. Uh, and it shall be done unto you. Brothers and sisters, if ye Abide in him. Notice what God said. If you abide, see, because we have not yet learned what it is to be in Christ Jesus. A lot of our prayers are not answered. Because we're not abiding in him. And what you don't know, every time you creep out and get outside the wheel, you just hit the your own blessings. Why? Because the blessing is to those that abide in him and you're not abiding. You may, have, you may have been with him Monday, but Tuesday, you're doing something you didn't have no business. You may have been with him Wednesday, but you didn't stick with him Thursday when your test came. So the blessing is to those that what abide in him, that you stay in him. Y'all watch it. That's number one. You, your heart is in a fixed position when you're in Jesus. The second thing it means is if a man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. Some say a new creation. Notice verse, read that scripture, the text again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you're really in Jesus, if you be in Christ, that old man who you used to be is gone. What does that mean? In essence, if you still are the same man, have the same nature that you've always had, God wants you to know that you are not in Christ Jesus. You still cussing? You're not in it. You still stealing? You're not in it. If you still fornicate, you're not in it. If you still cheat, you're not in it. If you still watch for now, if you're still working on the Sabbath, you're not in it. Amen. Amen. If a man be in Christ, he is new. Yes, 
Help us to understand he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Let me show you something. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. Let God break this down for us because I don't want anybody to die thinking you were in Jesus when you were not. No, this means a lot to me. Because too many people are dying and thinking they died in a safe place only to wake up in the judgment and found out they went the wrong way. It hurts me that people are dying behind what's being taught in the pulpit or rather what isn't being taught. That bothers me. People are churching so much and they're thinking that if they die, they're going to see Jesus in peace. But they died not in Jesus. I know too many church folk that still fornicate. I know too many people go to church that still lie. And they'll be led to believe that grace is going to save you if you overcome it will save you. But if you don't change, it will not. Because God talks about people receiving grace in vain. That means although God showed you mercy, gave you grace, some people are not going to profit or benefit from grace. You know why? Because you lived your life that long and you what? Never changed. You never quit. Watch it. Bring it. It hurts to bring it. And I'm going to show you what hurt us because we're talking about a new man. Uh -huh. Let me show you what hurt us. All of those years we were living outside Christ, Sister Molly, we learned some things. Some seeds were planted in us. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh -huh. Since childhood, certain seeds were planted in us and we did a lot of wrong. All of us did some wrong because of those seeds that were put in us growing up. We learned how to be sneaky. We learned how to fornicate. We learned how to lie. We learned how to steal. We learned how to do a lot of dirt. And we lived that way for years and not, listen, not knowing that was coming a time where we have to turn from those things. See, we didn't know that growing up. We didn't know that God was going to tell us we got to stop all that cussing. We didn't know that. Daddy used to cuss all the time. So we thought it was normal. We saw mama bringing different men home from time to time. So when I grew up, I thought that's just what you do when you grow. So you got hooked in some things on some things. Huh? I'll be in promiscuous. Is that right? But watch this. Watch it. Colossians 3, 9. Read it. Why not one to another? Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deed. Wait a minute. Why not one to another? Why not, Lord? Sin ye have put off the what? Old man. In other words, the old man used to lie. Right, Lord, say that. The old man used to fornicate. The old man used to do a lot of things. And those deeds are things that we used to practice doing. That's what got us in trouble. We did it so much. And we practiced these things to, to it got to a point that it was hard to do the right thing because we grew up doing the what? The wrong thing. Anything you practice in your life, that's what those deeds are. Let me show you something. If you start practicing shooting a basketball like this, don't you know when somebody comes along to show you the right way, it's hard to make certain adjustments when you've done things for so long the wrong way. That's the truth. That's a good example. Amen. Amen. Hmm. 
I've seen people try to change kids that had been doing something, a technique wrong for many years. And it became so challenging to get them to now to do things the right way. But this is what we're faced with. We've learned some bad examples. We didn't get the nurturing that we needed to be better people. We didn't have, listen, God-fearing parents to really teach us the ways of God. And we all got in trouble behind it. Because we learned the ways of people, not the ways of God. Y'all watch it. Seeing you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on what? The new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wait a minute. You've taken off the old man, that sinful man, and now you put on the new man and he gives you a description of what this new man will be a reflection of. He said, which is renewed. You know what that renewed is in the Greek? It, it means to renovate. You talk about a house. You go in houses, you get ready to, to buy, and you say, oh, I don't like that stove. Oh, 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 this carpet got to go. I don't like this carpet. See, my house, I like some good wood floors. I, I don't, ooh, Oh, this, this house has mold in it. Oh, oh, mold in it. I don't want this house. But the word in the Greek means to renovate. You have put on the new man, which is renovated. Now it tells you how in knowledge after the image of him that created him. What God is saying, you get a complete makeover, you get a complete renovation when you come to God, when he begins to increase your knowledge in the things of God. And why, oh God help us. The more we learn about God, that's what begins to change us. It gets rid of the mold. Huh? It gets rid of the lying tongues. See, when you renovate it in knowledge, it gets rid of those things that God didn't put there in the first place. Y'all watching now? Which is renovated in knowledge. This is why I can't understand why we're not running to get knowledge. This is why I can't understand why you have to twist arms to get to Sabbath school. This is why I can't understand why folk have to press you and talk you to get what you need to live. Your kitchen is dirty. Coming to Sabbath school is what would create the renovation Amen. that you need. Amen. Yeah. Not only are you not getting it, some of your children are not getting what they need because you're not doing what you should be doing. God gave children parents to do what is best for them. Amen. But we let our children this day dictate what's best for them. I hear some parents go back and forth with your child with eating vegetables. I remember my mom. Used to put those green vegetables on my plate. All I wanted was the yams, the watchmen out, the sweet potatoes, whatever was sweet. And y'all know we always reach for that Kool-Aid first. And mama would say, put that Kool-Aid down. Put that, don't touch that cake. Don't you eat those sweet potatoes until you eat those greens. This generation, 
Your kid don't want greens. You don't have to eat those greens, son. Just eat those potatoes and that, those sweet potatoes and that cornbread. You let children dictate what they do. They, they don't need parents like that. They need parents that's going to bless them to do what's good for them, regardless of what they want to do. It's not about what you want. It was what was best for us. So it's about what's best. God is not going to give you what you want. God gives you what's best for you. Good parents' children didn't have a choice. I couldn't stand my mom. But she was the best thing ever happened to me. I praise God. See, training doesn't feel good. Huh? Being disciplined doesn't feel good. But I tell you what, when you've had enough of it, you appreciate it. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm listening. Watch it. Come on, read. Let's go. Come on, verse 12. Come on. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. As the what? As the elect. Put of on God. as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Mm. Put on what? Vows of mercy. Wait a minute. See, this is what the chosen do when you are holy. Mm. See, the word that you get produces another product. See, you start out one way, but we're talking about a complete renovation. We're talking about a complete new house. Where all the old furniture had to go. All the old flooring had to go. All the old sheetrock had to go. And God comes in to do what he wants to do. And he said, put on, this is what you got to put on, some bowels of mercy. Because some church folk are not merciful at all. You need to learn how to put on mercy. Man, you got to start having some compassion for people. This is the new man. You came to church all hard, wanting to be seen as this way or that way, but that's not the nature of God. God didn't give you that attitude. God didn't give you that kind of heart. God is trying to give you a heart of mercy. Well, you care about people's feelings. You love people. Not only vows of mercy, but what? Kindness. See, this is the new man. He's kind to people. Know how to treat people. What else? Humbleness of mind. Now, this is something that God, 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 help us. See, when you talk about humbleness of mind, you're talking about seeing yourself not in no kind of exalted state. See, we live in a generation where everybody want to be the man. Everybody want to be exalted. This humbleness of mind is esteeming yourself low. Let me show y'all something. Y'all talk about Moses. Talk about when Moses said. And I'm going to show you what nothing wrong with Moses. Moses just had a humbleness of mind. That word humbleness of mind is that you you disesteem yourself. You, you see yourself as nothing. You see yourself as, listen, somebody that need help, that watch me now. You see yourself at, on the lowest level. That's what that humbleness of mind means. That's why when God called Moses, he said, God, you know, I can't talk. The truth is, he could talk real good, but he didn't have an exalted view of himself. With all of that wisdom, with all of that knowledge, he didn't see himself as nothing. That's why he told God, you need to give my brother. He, he, he can speak good. He, 
but yet you turn to ask. Don't misunderstand that. The brother was just humble. Yeah, that's a good point. See, but when you try to exalt yourself like you something, uh-huh. brothers and sisters, Jesus came with a humbleness of mind. Uh-huh. As long as you exalt it, uh-huh. there's a work to be done right. on your building. Yes, Do y'all get that? Yes, Man, we take the lowest road. We learn how, when we study the word of God, we learn how to esteem other people better than ourselves. Is that right? So we're talking about a humbleness of mind. The next one is what? Meekness. This is what you got to put on. You have to put on meekness. Brothers and sisters, you got to learn how to be gentle towards each other. It's not about this generation has taught us you need to be hard. Jesus has taught us that's not what you need to be. That's what you used to be. Now you need to learn how to be humble. Teaching these boys, man, don't take that. Man, what you doing? You ain't weak. What you? You set these boys up. And you, they're being killed because we have not taught them a humbleness of mind. There's a difference between being meek and being weak. You're not weak because you are humble. Amen. What not weak about Jesus? What not weak about Moses? But they were meek men. But they were never weak. Amen. See, ignorance is a plague when you think uh, meekness is a weakness. And because of that ignorance, a lot of our young men are being slain in the streets because you taught them to stand up for yourself. Be hard. See, Christians teach each other. Watch me now. The word of God teach us to uh, give place to realm. Vengeance uh, uh, is the Lord's. We learn from studying God's word that the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. I don't have to get you back. I don't have to stare you down. I don't have to talk to you crazy. I don't have to toot my horn at you because you tooted your horn at me. The Bible teaches us that God will fight our battles. That's why we can be humble in the face of adversity and knowing that God's got it. That's when you're in Jesus. That's when you're in Jesus. See, when you're not in Jesus, you got to take your shirt off. You got to flex a little bit so you don't want none of this. That's when you're not in Jesus. You go to the workout, you go to the gym 24 7, trying to get something to intimidate somebody. You don't have to waste all that time if you're in the master. Now, y'all watching, come on, read. We got to get through this. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Long sir. Long suffering? Stop being short with one another. Come on. Forbearing one another. Let's put up with each other. Yes, sir. You may not like some of my ways. Uh, I may not like some of your ways. Uh, but let's put up with one another. Yes, sir. Huh? That's being in Jesus, y'all. Yes, Forbearing, forgiving one another. Watch me. And if any man have a quarrel, what? Even as Christ forgave you. So also do ye. That, that's a game changer. I'm not going to be holding no grudge against you. Amen. Watch me now. Because why? Christ didn't hold a grudge against me. And if I'm in Christ, his word got to abide in me. His word got to stay in me if I'm in him. So you do me, you do dirt to me if you want to. It's all right. One person you, you don't have to worry about getting you back is me. Mm. Ain't got time to get you back. I feel sorry for you. 
Because I know you're going to reap what you sow. And the more dirt you sow, I'm feeling sorry for you because you're going to reap what you sow. And so if you want to sow blessings, if you want to sow good, then that's what, if you want to reap these things, that's what you sow. Give people what you want to reap. Love people if you want to be loved. Give to people if you want given to you. Huh? Y'all get that? Watch this. Come on. And above all these things. Above all this what? Put on charity, which is the bond of perfect. That's like the, that's like the ligament that holds stuff together. He said, put on love. And if we've known what, what, what the Bible says concerning love, if you don't have love, I don't care if you give your body to be burned, if you don't have love, ah, you don't have nothing. The Bible says, man, sister, brother, look, you like sound and brass tinkling cymbals. You have the form of God in it, but you deny the power. And what is the form of God in this without power? You need power. Hey, hey, hey. You got to learn how to love one another. Look at 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Watch this, 16. Here it is. Watch this. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In let, all let, let the word what? Of Christ dwell in you richly Wait a in all wisdom. Remember we talk about you got to, you got to, what? What did we say? Abide. You got to, sisters and brothers, you got to be stationary. If you be in Christ, you got to stay there through it all. That's why he said, let the word of Christ, Christ what? Dwell. Let it stay in you. Because see, sometimes the word is in us and sometimes it's not. When, what's the difference? When you obey God, the word is in you. When you choose to disobey the word is not. He said, let it stay. It, 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 it leaves at your convenience. Brothers and sisters, a big mistake. If you don't allow the word to dwell in you, then you don't be in Christ Jesus. What I want to do, I'm going to sum this up. Ephesians 4, 21, real quick. Watch this. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. The truth is what? Is in Jesus. Is in Jesus. Go ahead. That ye put off concerning, concerning the former conversation. The old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. The old man he's telling you is corrupt. That old house, that old you, he's telling you it's not a question. The old you is corrupt. The old you want to do you. Still want to get out of line. Still want to go bad. Still want to go left. That's the old you. He said, now, I don't know if y'all got that, according to the deceitful lust. Let me tell you what that's dealing with. See, the old man will fool you. That farm you think you having is deceitful, man, because it's going to cost you. That stuff that you call pleasure, it's going to cost you your life. And that's why the Bible said it's deceitful lust. Those desires that pulling you down, not building you up. It's deceitful. It will make you think there's some promise to it. It will make you think there's a blessing coming because your, your flesh is happy. Your flesh is satisfied. Your flesh is feeling 
and good, but what you don't know is fooling you. It's going to cost you. That deceitful lust. That thing you want so bad that you don't care what God says. That thing you want so bad you don't think about the will of the Father. All you're thinking about is you. It's going to fool you. It's going to cost you. Ah. In other words, sisters and brothers, let me tell you what God is simply saying. See, if you're in Christ, you have a new talk. If you're in Christ, you have a new walk. If you're in Christ, watch me now. If you're in him, you don't live like you used to. If you're in him, you change from who you were to who you ought to be. If you're in it, see, if you're in it, you do Bible study with your family. If you're in Christ, you make better decisions and you make the right ones according to Christ Jesus. If you be in him, if you're in him, there, there comes a point in time well, it's not about what your will is. It's about what his will is. That's if you be in him. Let me show you some of the benefits, sisters and brothers. I want y'all to listen to this real well. Some of the benefits for being in Christ. That's when you become that new man. Notice the scripture says, all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. See, when we come to Jesus, if we're not in Christ yet, we tend to want to cleave to some of the old things. Is that right? We still want to look like we used to. Because we remember the praise that we got. So you want to still look like you used to. You still want to do some of the things that you did before you came to Christ. Now, you know, I'm on a nook club and Jesus thought, you know, watch me, watch me. You still want to, hey girl, you know, I can't, I can't touch it, but ain't no wrong with a little flirty. You still want to do. Huh? You still want to be who you used to be. I'm going to show you something. The Bible says, therefore, if a man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature. All things are it what? Passed away. Behold, how many things are we All things. How I much? Do. All things. You can't keep those dirty cabinets. You can't keep that mold in that house after you are doing your renovation. You got to let that stuff go. There are some, there are some, uh, what do you call those things? There should be eating that wood. Uh, termites. There are some termites in your walls that's eating away at the inside. Those walls got to go. I don't care how much you want to hold on to those walls. You've got to let it go because all things become new. Your conversation, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you walk, everything becomes new. I was talking to my wife this week, and I got to hurry up. Ah, I got to go. Ah. See, see, I'm. Ah. Let me say this real quick. I got to move. I'm gonna have to miss some stuff, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell y'all this. I was talking to my wife. We were watching uh, Gunsmoke, and I shared it with Gina last night. And I was looking at how the, the women uh, back in the day. Y'all ever watch those old westerns? How they all they have to pull their dresses up to move? Y'all remember that? You remember? You couldn't even see the ankles. I look at Kitty. Y'all remember Kitty with, with Matt Dillon? She likes a man, I believe, didn't she? She like, watch this. 
I looked at all those sisters. And I looked at how, brother, that was nothing to covet. That was nothing to lust after. You be looking through some dress, you can't see nothing the way they covered themselves. But I look at what the devil has done a step at a time, an inch at a time. I look at where we've gone from now. Women are in the grocery stores naked. It didn't happen overnight, it was done gradually. Old women, 60 years old, wearing tights. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you something. This is why we have to be remodeled. We have to be renovated. We have to be made over again. Because what this world is teaching you is killing you. It's killing your brothers. It's killing the sisters. You need to get back to practicing what God said. No woman should go outside in a non-modest attire. No woman should go outside without being properly covered. Stop letting this world dictate to a mar. Start covering yourselves up. I'm closing this, y'all. Let me show you some. Let me share, let you know the benefits. First of all, see, all things become new. See, you know when you when you are in Jesus, the first benefit I want to mention to you, do you know when you are in Jesus, death passes you by? Hey, wait a minute. Death that had your address, your email, your phone number, death when you're in Jesus, you get this pass. Watch me now. That death can't touch you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And I don't mean this physical death. We all must experience a physical death. But guess what? It will not be premature if you're in it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. And I'm talking mainly about the second death. Notice what the Bible says, that, that there is no condemnation, Romans 8, 1, there is now no what? No condemnation. To who? To them which are in Christ Jesus. That are what? In Christ Jesus. That are in Jesus. If you still practice in your sin, you don't have the covering that you need. There is no condemnation to those that are in Christ. If you're lying, you're not in it. If you're fornicating, you're not in it. If you're still homonging, you're not in it. The condemnation yeah. is for those. Read, read, read that verse. Come on, quickly. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you will in, when you're in Christ, your whole life changed. Now you do what the Spirit wants you to do. And you can't tell me the Holy Ghost wants you out in public naked. You can't tell me that. That means you're walking in the flesh. That's all flesh. See women sitting up talking about praising all behind the pulpit in sexy outfits. That's not the Spirit. That's flesh. And that's why the churches are so challenged today. Men can't hardly see their way, but any way they look, they see something that they have no business seeing in the church. Church has become just like the club. Y'all watching now? Death passes you by. When you are in Jesus, there is no condemnation to that man. I got to show you this, y'all, sisters and brothers. Let me tell you something, another benefit. See, 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 God won't condemn you. You won't be lost if you're in Jesus. You have protection. And let me tell you something. 
Don't you know if you're in Jesus, you have the benefit Pops God has promised you he's going to make sure that if you die in Christ, he's going to raise you up in the first resurrection. He's going to wake you up in the first resurrection, the resurrection of life, if you, if you die in it. That's why the scariest thing for me is to die outside Jesus, doing me and not him. Notice what he said. About that death. Second, I mean, First Thessalonians four and sixteen. Notice what it said: For the Lord Himself shall what? Shall descend from heaven with, with a what? shout, with the voice of the archangel, and and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ. The dead who? The dead in Christ shall, shall rise first. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. You want to make sure that when that trumpet sound, that you died in the Lord. You don't want to die outside Jesus. You want to wake up in the first resurrection. Stop letting the devil play with you when you know you're not inside God's will, when you know you're not in Christ. Don't take another step in that direction. Make up your mind that you want to get in Christ and you want to stay in it. That guarantees that you wake up in the first resurrection. Brothers and sisters, I know, I know I can't afford to gamble and get outside his will. Because God says some folk play and you get caught outside his will. God know how to catch the stumbling block to make sure you die in your sin and you don't get back to where you're supposed to be. And so what am I saying? We got to stop gambling. We got to stop playing with God. And we got to get somewhere, like the old folk used to say, get somewhere and sit down. And that somewhere is in Christ Jesus. We need to find our way to get in this word, to get back in Jesus. And we need to sit right down. We need to stay there. We need to stay there. Not only is, is the first resurrection a benefit of being in Christ. Let me show you there are some spiritual blessings that you can't access without being in Christ. Let me show you something real quick. Come on, y'all. We got to come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ephesians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be who? Be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch him. Who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In who? In Christ. There are blessings that you can attain yes, being outside Christ. Yes, God is saying, man, there are spiritual blessings that are, listen, have your name on it, but you can't attain it now because you're not where you need to be. Make up your mind today that you don't want to leave this place outside Christ. Make up your mind today. I want to get in Jesus and I want to sit down because I want to access every blessing with my name on it. See, we got to understand, sisters and brothers, there are some spiritual blessings. There are some spiritual blessings with your, with your names on it. You think I'm kidding? That's why God's saying, I won't withhold no, no good things from he or she that what? Walketh upright. When you get in Christ, there's some blessings that's going to come with your name on it. Didn't God tell you he know what you need even before you ask? Don't you know God know when you have a troubled mind? God know when you're going through in your heart. God knows, but sometimes he can't move because if he move while you're in sin, you won't have sense enough to get to him. So he call you. Come over here. Come on, my child. Come on, press to get to me. I have something for you. Show me that you're determined to make it to where I am. And when you press, when you fight, when you commit to get now, God said, okay, I see you, son. Come on, cross that line. Come on, I'm going to help you. I'm gonna Come on, cross that line. And all of a sudden, he said he got some blessings for you. There are some spiritual blessings, but they only are attained in Christ. That's why, sisters and brothers, you think you think it's something else, but that's why the devil fights you from overcoming your sin. That's why he fights you from lining up.
because he don't want you to get those blessings that'll, that'll prepare for you. He don't want you to get the victory. He don't want you to get the help that you need. He don't want you to have the hope that you need. So he keep you outside the Lord. Have you out here playing. Why watch me? Brothers and sisters, there are spiritual blessings that you only get being in Christ. You got to make up your mind today. You know what, Lord? I don't want to lie no more. Lord, if he ain't mine, I don't want him no more. If she's not mine, I don't want her anymore. I don't want to steal another day. I don't want to cuss nobody out another day. I don't want to be outside God's will another day. Because I want what you have for me. Amen. And you, you got to have a humble heart, sisters and brothers. Let God do his work on your heart. Come on down today, all the way down. Amen. Don't let it be about you. Don't let it be about your will. Do what the master did. Not my will, but let your will be done. I dare you to tell God that today yes, you surrendering your will. Yes, it's about what you want. I dare you to do it today. And let me tell you something. The last benefit. I can't tell you all of them. We'll be here all day to tell you all the benefits. But I'm going to tell you this. See, God called. He said he know those that are his. Is that right? See, you can't fool God. Going to church don't mean don't make you his. Talking the Bible don't make you his. Witnessing the folk every now and then don't make you his. But the Lord say, I know those that are mine. Watch it. Uh -huh. What is he saying? See, Jesus talk about, he know his sheep. Uh -huh. Huh? He know his sheep. Yes, sir. Sheep are animals that don't think for themselves. Hey! Yeah, yeah. Sheep are those animals that depend on the shepherd. And God say, when you allow him, if you get in him, He'll lead you. If you get in it, he'll guide you. Watch me now. If you get in it, he'll protect you. If you get in it, he'll fight your battles. If you get in it, he will be your shepherd. You don't have to worry about being led astray. If you just get in it, you'll say too. As David said, because David's heart was fixing the Lord. That's why he was able to say the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Watch it now. In other words, all of my needs are going to be met. If I'm in trouble with Saul, it's God's job. It's the shepherd's job to protect me from Saul. Even though I could cut off the hem of his garment, it's not my job to fight my battles. You better watch him. I love it. What he said, watch me now. Uh -huh. I shall not walk. Uh -huh. It's the Lord that maketh me to lie down in what? In green pastures. That means that what I need, uh -huh. sheep need some green grass yes, if they're going to survive this thing. Uh -huh. He is the one, yes, the true shepherd, yes, lead the sheep uh -huh. to greener pastures. Hey, uh -huh. it won't be you. To bless yourself. I don't care how much education you have. It's the shepherd that will lead his sheep to greener pastors. So when you start coming up, when you start being blessed, don't forget the shepherd that brought you. Don't forget the shepherd that kept you. Don't get the sheep. Don't forget the shepherd. Watch me now. It's something about how he said. He leads me beside the still waters. In other words, it's the shepherd's job to bring me to a point where I can drink in peace. Still waters are not troubled. You don't have to drink and be watching when you're eating them all, drinking them all still waters. See, the waters are calm. There's a peace in the water. Watch me now. Y'all with me? There's a peace there. There's a calm. The Bible says he leaded me by the steel walls. You need to understand one other thing. That 
is the shepherd that restores my soul. What does it mean? He allowed you to go through. He allowed you to go through periods where you didn't think you were going to make it. He allowed the devil to tempt you and put you in a bad way. But just like he allowed you to cry and to go through pain and suffering, the Bible says the same God that held you through the storm is the same God that now is going to restore you. It's the same God that's going to build you back up to where you've been torn down. Hey! He restored my soul. The Bible said that that same shepherd leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He'll help you to live right. He'll bless you to overcome sin. He'll bless you not to want to be like them. He will bless you to do what you know is right. Oh, my Lord. All I want to say, I just want to ask you, are you in Jesus this morning? Are you in Jesus this morning? Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, it is in the name of Jesus that we bow our heads even now. Lord, we thank you for helping us to understand to be in Jesus. Mean that the old man has been crucified. Who and what we used to be is now gone. Now we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Oh, Father. Some of us have come broken this morning. All of us have come needing you. Father, we pray that you would be present this morning in, in our hearts, in our minds. We pray, oh, Father, that you would lead us back to you this morning. Oh, Father, we've been through a lot. But we know if we're going to be healed, it will be done by you and you alone. So, Father, we pray that you will move in this place. In every heart assembled in this place, renew our minds. Oh, Father, help us with making good and right decisions. Touch every heart in this place. Oh, Father, if we're not in you, we want to get in you today. So, Father, we ask that you will bless us to this end. Oh, Father, let your will be done in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That may be somebody in here today. You see the signs that you've not been in Christ. But you don't want to leave the 